everybody, it's Cade Laufenberg here with Wide Open Spaces. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about GoPro cameras and how you can make the best use out of them possible when you're fishing and hunting. So I'm going to go through a little bit about what I use, the accessories that I use, some of the shots that I like to set up when I'm out in the field, and then finally we'll get into how I edit my films. And uh, I really think that by watching this video you're going to learn quite a bit about using your GoPro camera and you'll be impressing your friends and family on social media before you know it. Now the first thing I want to talk about is power supply. You know, the GoPro cameras are a phenomenal piece of equipment, but you're going to run through battery power, especially when you're out there in the elements, fishing in the cold, hunting in the cold. You know, that just eats up your battery life. So you need to have more than one battery on hand. You know, I'd really recommend having three batteries with you at all times in the field. I carry two. Um, but then again, I'm also usually recharging my batteries throughout throughout the day if I'm moving locations, whether it be in the vehicle or by boat. You know, I keep a cigarette lighter charger rigged up with my GoPro batteries charging at all times. But the other thing you want to do is get yourself a dual charger. It's one of these. It's two sided. You know, and I have it plugged into a you know a multi output or multi input USB charger like this. And you know that enables me to charge my GoPro, my phone, and any of my other devices all at the same time. So that's just something to think about. You can get these things off Amazon.com for very cheap. I'd really recommend you pick yourself up a dual charging battery charger. You can charge two GoPro batteries at one time. Super handy. Have them charged in like an hour, and you're back going. You know, back to your filming. So the other thing you're going to want to think about when you buy your GoPro. Uh, you're you're going to need some source of storage space on your GoPro camera and for converting it over to your computer. You know, if you're on a long trip, you're going to you're going to use up a lot of memory on your GoPro camera if you don't have time to empty that off on a computer every day. So, I would recommend getting at least a 32 gigabyte uh, micro SD card. You really probably want to go up to that 64. It's a little bit more spendy, but you're really going to be glad you did. You're you're going to get a lot more time on that and it's just going to keep you a lot happier. The last thing you want to do when you're out in the field is having to go back through and delete footage that maybe was decent footage, but you got to delete it because you're out of space in the hopes that you're going to get better footage to replace that. You know, I call it cull footage. I'm culling stuff that is marginal in hopes that I'm going to get some better footage later in the day. But you really don't want to do that. You want to get everything, and then when you go back through and edit it, that's when you get rid of that cull footage. So. Make sure you got yourself a big enough SD card to handle what you're doing out there and keep a spare with you. I, I run a 32 gig, but I like to keep a 16 gig with me. That way, if I fill my SD card up with a bunch of awesome footage, still have my 16 gig to get a little bit more at the end of the day. You know, and for some perspective for you, the 32 gig at 30 frames per second, which is high quality filming, uh, I'm getting about four and a half hours of footage. So. If you run things right and delete footage throughout the day that you don't need, you know, say I'm going down a bank fishing and I don't catch a fish for 20 minutes and my GoPro's running that whole time, I'll just simply go back through in the settings, delete that clip because I don't need it. I don't need a footage of or I don't need footage of me trolling down a bank casting and not getting anything because no one wants to see that. Let's be honest. So I delete that and it enables me to just kind of keep my life going throughout the day. So. This is another thing to think about, storage space on your GoPro camera. The next thing I want to get into today, I want to start talking about some of the accessories that I bought for my GoPro that make filming out there in the field a lot easier for me. I can get some really interesting shots from a variety of different perspectives, and I'm only running one camera. So with a little creative intuition, you can go out there and produce some very high quality films of your hunts or fishing trips. First thing I like, I got, a, I got the chesty, the, the GoPro chesty mount. You know, it simply goes onto your chest, and uh, you know you're going to get footage from the chest of whatever you're doing. So this particular mount works really great for me to mount that GoPro on my chest. You know, I'm fishing like this, I get a really great shot of my reel and my hand reeling. It's not the kind of shot that I'm going to want all of my footage to be in, but it's one of those things that we talk about. We're going to talk about cutaways. You know, if you're talking about fishing. And it's textbook you watch any fishing show you'll see all kinds of cutaways throughout the show that make it more interesting and bring it all together it's literally just a two or three second bit where I'm going to show myself reeling and the rest of that bit is going to be from another angle of me you know hooking a fish or whatever and the same goes for if you're hunting you know you're going to have that one chest shot 
of you looking down the barrel of the gun. And most of the time when you do that shot, you're literally just doing it to get the shot, not when you're actually hunting. You know, it just adds to the life of that video and really brings it out. It's going to get you a lot more views when you have cutaways and interesting shots that you get with the chest mount and other mounts that we're about to talk about next. Another mount that you really just got to have, this is a very, very versatile mount. It's the handlebar mount. It's meant for bikers, uh, motorcyclists. You mount it on your handlebars and you can have that, that GoPro facing you or facing the road, whichever way you're going. But I found that this, this handy tool, you know, you just simply unscrew it off of there like that. You can open this thing up, widen it as, long, as wide as you need, and that'll go around, you know, a pipe or a metal object or, or any kind of circular object in the form of a handlebar, you know, similar in nature. So I found there's plenty of different things on my boat. Um, and for instance, when I'm ice fishing, it hooks perfectly on the shack inside on the bars that go across the top. And I can angle that and position it in a way that gets me and all of my equipment in the shot. It's a very versatile tool. Recommend you get yourself a handlebar mount. Another crucial mount that I use very, very often, whether I'm ice fishing, open water fishing, I'm using this head mount. It works phenomenally for a wide variety of different shots. And even if I'm trying to film one of my friends fishing, you know, my, my partner in the back of the boat, he's got a fish on, all I have to do is simply look his direction and I'm getting all that in the shot, you know. I've generated some pretty phenomenal fishing uh, video of smallmouth bass action, you know, up north, northern Minnesota on the Mississippi River using nothing more than just, just the head cam. So keep that in mind. This is definitely one of the top three that you're going to want to purchase immediately because you're just going to get some really awesome point of view footage that is really going to feel very personal to the person who's watching the film. They're going to feel like they're really in there. It's submersive. It's, it's everything that anybody wants to see. You know, it, There's nothing cooler. Whether you, It doesn't matter what you're doing, fishing, hunting. If the audience member feels like he's there with you, you're doing a good job. That's a successful film, something that's going to keep people interested, going to get you more subscribers. They're going to want to see more of that stuff. So if you're snowboarding, going down a, a double diamond out in Colorado, and you got this head cam on showing how you approach the hill, and it makes that viewer feel like they're actually there with you, that's what you want. Another really cool mount that's been great for me in some of my cutaway footage has been the wrist mount. Um, basically, and I got this for $6 off Amazon.com, super easy, super cheap investment. It's just this little strap that goes on your wrist with a base plate on it. GoPro mounts on it like so. You know, you can, you can have it facing either way you want. I like mine facing out off of my hand because if I turn this in a way like this, when I'm holding my rod, that GoPro is going to look straight down the barrel of my rod. That's enabled me to get some really cool footage looking down the barrel of the rod as I complete a cast motion, as I complete a hook set motion, and you know even just it's super easy to just smoothly follow a shot if you're trying to film somebody else or maybe just get a pan view of what you're looking at, the scenery around you. Simply take your wrist and you can, you can simply film it just like that. So that works really well for me. Another mount that I really like, simply the, the flat platform mount that comes in the package with the GoPro. This has been phenomenal for me. Anytime you're fishing in a stationary area or hunting for that matter um, where it's not going to be an issue of something flying out of the boat or anything like that, this sits flat on any surface that's flat and it's been really great for me ice fishing. I can sit it down, I can tilt it however I want and I can get my whole body, my bucket, my ice hole, everything in the shot. Just literally would set it on the ice. It takes two seconds to set it up and it gets great shots, you know, super easy, simple, but this is probably my most used mount that I have in all of my repertoire of mounts. Keep these mounts in mind and they're going to help you become a better film producer and you're going to be putting out some pretty awesome outdoor hunting and fishing videos. So last but not least, I promised that I would talk to you a little bit about editing software and I'm going to do just that. Basically what I use, I use Premiere Pro, it's an Adobe uh, program and I, I'm very fortunate to get the program as part of my tuition here at Winona State University. So that said, it's an expensive program. It's not one that a beginning film producer might necessarily want to buy just simply because of that cost. And the nice thing about GoPro, when you buy a GoPro camera, 
You can download the GoPro software off their website. It's going to give you some basic editing tools. You're going to be able to edit your films, chop things together, crop footage, just the real basic type stuff. You're going to be able to make a foot, uh, film that's interesting and viewable. You know, and, and that's really the basics. That's really what you need. The biggest thing is going out there and getting that content and doing it in a smart, creative way that's interesting. We talk about the cutaway shots where you want to provide footage from different angles of different actions that are interesting as it pertains to what you're doing. That's really going to be a lot more important than fancy effects, fancy sound transitions, audio, video transitions. You really want to focus on getting that content. Once you start getting good at producing awesome content, then you're really going to want to step up into some of those bigger editing programs if you really want to advance yourself in the film producing community. So that said, look at Premiere Pro. iMovie is also a great program. That's what I started out with, again, through the university. And lastly, there's Final Cut Pro, which I don't have much experience with, but a lot of my good fishing friends who frequently produce videos, as I do, use Final Cut Pro. It seems to work great for them. So just a few programs to keep in mind. If you have any further questions, feel free to email me or look me up on Facebook. I'd be very happy to answer any questions you have regarding GoPro cameras or just if you want to talk fishing. I'm very available and I'd love to talk. But for right now, I'm going to have to go and charge my GoPro because I'm going fishing tomorrow and Saturday and Sunday. So I'm going to have to let you guys go. But it's been nice talking to you about GoPro cameras and I hope that you stay tuned for some more of my interesting content. I'll be bringing it to you all summer long on WideOpenSpaces.com.